Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I have another problem I wanted to give you for, and this will be another axial loading problem. And it is an interesting problem because it involves a couple of different concepts that are going to be added into this. So let's read the problem here. Uh, if, if the gap between C and the rigid wall at D is initially 0.15 millimeters, we have C and D, so D is the wall, you have a gap of 0.15 millimeters. Determine the support reactions at A and D. We're looking for the support reactions at the wall itself that it starts to touch and the wall that it is mounted to. When the force P is equal to 200. So we have a value of 200 on this force, this applied load that's touching this joint at B. So again, first thing you want to know is we've got two segments. We've got a segment from A to B. We've got a segment from B to C. You know, this also goes from being a determinate condition to an indeterminate condition. So it, so it's a determinate condition as it, when it's initially set up up until it touches the wall then it becomes indeterminate with this load applied to it <clears throat> so we're gonna have to come up with a way of solving this problem keeping all these things in mind we also have a rate or a diameter for both segments and both segments have a common length and both segments have a common material so what we know is we're going to use superposition to find the linear deformation the total linear deformation. So that is load times length for the area times Young's modulus. So we know that that's one thing we're definitely going to end up utilizing. So let's go and set this problem up and we will see where we can go with this. So again, the first thing we start off with is with a coordinate system, a free body diagram, and we established everything we've been given. We've been given the material, we've been given the various lengths, length of both segment AB, BC are both 600 millimeters or 0.6 meters. The diameter of AB and BC is 0 0.05 meters or 0 0.025 meters. We got a gap of 0.15 millimeters and a applied load of 200 kilonewtons. We're being asked to find the support reactions at A and D as the load is applied. All right, so what concepts are we going to utilize here? Well, we're going to have to deal with static equilibrium. We're also going to have to uh, look at the deformation, linear deformation equation. Uh, we're going to have to deal with the compatibility condition. And then we're also going to have to use the force method of analysis for this particular problem. So let's solve one of the most simple things first. Out of this equation, we need a cross-sectional area for both segments. Since we do have you know, most of this here, we have the length, we have the Young's modulus. Let's go ahead and get that one. That was an easy one to, to solve. So the area of AB, you know, pi over four times the diameter squared is 0 0.002 meters for AB and it's 0 0.005 meters squared for segment BC. So another thing that I wanted to add to my free body diagram, I didn't put this on initially, is we will have a support reaction both at A and a reaction at B, but it will only happen at B as it touches the wall. Uh, so what the B, or D, excuse me, what D is actually doing is it's actually stopping or preventing this distortion if this were to remain as a determinate condition. So really what it is is addressing this displacement that would theoretically come into play. So that's what the support reaction would look like in both cases. So we're going to assume that it is going in the opposite, the negative direction at A, and it is going in the negative direction resisting at D. So that means we 
First thing we can do with this type of problem is start with our equilibrium equations. So I'm just going to take the sum of the forces. Again, going to the right is zero. So if you look at what all forces are at play here, you've got the load P that's being applied minus the reaction at, at A and the reaction at D is going to equal to zero. So that comes out that P is equal to A plus D, which is all going to still come out to 200 gigapascals. All right, so we've basically gotten uh, the problem initially set up. We got started off with the simple things of coming up with the cross-sectional area, trying to understand the logic of the problem, and came with a, a static equilibrium for how the forces, you know, the, the force, the applied forces and the support reactions are going to, to interact. If we go back to the initial problem again and look at, try and reason through things a little bit more. So what, what can we say we do know here, you know, kind of review things. We've got a 200 kilonewton load and it's going to force section AB into tension. You know, it's going to pull in one direction, could have an equal and opposite reaction in the other. Right. And B, uh, BC will be in a state of compression as it forces it into the wall. So we get a reaction going in that direction there. So we know that's going to happen for sure. We also know that we're going to need this def our displacement equation, both addressing what's going on at AB as well at, but it won't really happen quite at D until it meets the wall. So that's where this compatibility condition takes place. So it's going to displace this amount and nothing more. But that load is going to exceed, potentially exceed what, what would happen at that reaction of D. And that's, it's the, the dashed line, phantom line going through D. So what D is doing is it's, basically compensating for this, this displacement to match that compatibility condition. So the wall D will create a reaction force so that the net displacement is basically just the gap, you know, which will be the compatibility condition. So what we're looking at for that total deformation which is only going to be 0.15. It's going to, going to fill the gap and then it's going to stop due to the reaction at the wall. It's going to be the deformation from this load, which is going to push it to the wall minus the deformation, which is caused on this reaction. And keep in mind, this reaction is going to be up being applied to both segment BC and AB. So this is going to be the more challenging part of the problem. So this is going to be applied to A, B, and B, C, you know, in that, in that reaction, even though the deformation from the load is only going to affect A, B. All right. So let's go back to our problem. So again, we calculated our areas. We also know what the static equilibrium is going to be based on our reaction loads and our applied loads. It's going to be 200 kilonewtons. We also know that our compatibility is 0.15 millimeters. And it's the displacement of AB minus the reaction due to D, the displacement that's going to be imposed on both segments. So superposition. That is to utilize that, that term superposition. So let's figure out what is going on at AB first based on that load. So if you look at the load, the deformation due to load P, here we've got the load of AB times the length of AB over the area of AB times Young's modulus. So that's the 200 kilonewtons. K is just uh, 10 to the third and 0.6 meters length and then this cross-sectional area 0 0.002 meters squared and 200 gigapascals or 10 to the ninth gigapascals if you notice a pascal is just the newton per meter squared so this cancels 
You can always check your units, making sure that they come out correctly, and you end up with nothing but meters for your displacement, which is 0 0.003 meters or 0.3 millimeters. So as you can see, if just on that load alone, that 200, uh, 200 kilonewton load, you're, you're moving, you're, you would normally displace this twice as much as that gap. You go 15 millimeters and then without that wall there, you would actually take it out to 0.3 millimeters. Right, so the wall is stopping what's going on. And that means that AB is going to get a bigger reaction because of that. So now we consider what deformation has taken place due to that reaction at D. We have to do is look at both segments AB and BC. And we're looking at what that reaction due to D is. So this is the force at, at the reaction force uh, at D. Now we're looking at the length of AB. We're looking at the area of AB and Young's modulus. Same going on at BC, the length of BC, the area of BC, and Young's modulus. So keep in mind that that reaction force is going through the entire member. That's why we're able to use superposition to understand that. So we've got a reaction due to the load that only gets applied to AB, and a reaction due to, or excuse me, a, yeah, a reaction due to the, the load at the wall that applies to both AB and BC. So we plug in our numbers, and we still don't know what that reaction is, so we just represent it as F of D. So we got the length, the cross-sectional area, 0 0.002 meters squared, and 200 gigapascals, uh, which is our Young's modulus. And for BC, again, same length, a different cross-sectional area, 0 0.0005 meters squared, same Young's modulus. So if we reduce this, we end up with 1.5 times 10 to the ninth F of D plus 6.0 times 10 to the ninth F of D, which just comes up to 7.5 times 10 to the ninth F of D. So we still don't know what F of D is. We have a function to describe the displacement that D is going to impose. All right, so we got our findings here. So now we also can take into account that compatibility equation. So the compatibility equation, this is why that's so important. It's 0.15 millimeters. And again, we know that that compatibility condition is basically the difference between how much this is going to go in one direction minus the force reaction from the other direction. We know that's going to come out at 0 0.00015 meters. Just put this in the meters just to make it easier on myself. And that's the way this equation looks. So it's the displacement of AB minus the displacement, the quantity of the displacement at AB plus the displacement of BC. So both segments of that rod is equal to our compatibility condition. So plug in its values. You can remember we had this reaction force at D, you know, and we end up with the force at D as 20 kilonewtons. So we got 20 kilonewtons as the reaction force at D. Now keep in mind we've also got this to worry about, our compatibility equation. So we know the force at D. And we know that the force that is being applied is 200 kilonewtons. So that means the force at A is just the difference. And it comes out at 180 kilonewtons. So you're going to have 180 kilonewtons on one side. 180 kilonewtons at A. And 20 kilonewtons at A. D. So this is Professor Cummings, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if this was helpful to you. I'll keep doing these types of videos. 
comment and let me know whether the videos you might need you know might be helpful to you i'm just working on strength and materials right now because that's the class i'm teaching for the summer um you know hit the like button if it was useful to you hit the share button if you think it's going to help someone else you know if you have classmates or somebody else that you think you might need to see this and hit the dislike button if you didn't like the uh equation you know those things do bring me up in the search algorithm a little bit more so that people can get a little more exposure to this so again this is professor cummings and i will talk to you later